Welcome to the channel. If you are a returning viewer, you may recognize this battery from my electric mountain board build. This video will be the breakdown of the assembly process of the 20 amp hour battery. To begin, I was simply looking for the best format that would allow me to fit the most amount of cells within the waterproof battery box. So I started with just taping the cells in different orientations until I was satisfied. This led to the final result being a 12S 9P 20 amp hour pack. From there I moved on to gluing the cells to hold them together while welding and to reduce movement in the finished product. After I completed gluing the parallel groups, I moved on to layering capped on tape, fish paper, and fiberglass lined tape. I started with the capped on tape to give the flat surface for fish paper to hold while adding some abrasive resistance. From there I apply the fish paper, but in this build I didn't have any fish paper with adhesive on the back, so I also used 3M tape which turned out to be more convenient in the end. This fish paper adds fire resistant layer that you can lay wires over, isolated from the welds or cells. It also protects from outside damage. After trimming the packs, I used the fiberglass tape to hold it all together. You can see I did two groups of 5S packs in an alternating pattern to make the welding more efficient. Here I measure and cut all the nickel need for the series connections. I start by welding all series connections, followed by parallel groups. You can see I added the short, double stacked 1S 9P groups to the end of the 5S packs, and I'm starting to incorporate the balance leads.
Now I'm layering fish paper over the welded sides to cover the bare metal leads allowing the two 6S packs to be mounted side by side safely. I decided to add two pieces of adhesive foam for shock and vibration dampening to reduce the friction between the two packs. This is where I welded a strip of nickel for the series connections between the two 6S packs, giving a flat spot to solder copper wire to to carry the main supply of power, since the nickel is only rated for 14 to 20 amps maximum, and this pack will be delivering close to a quadruple that at some times. I use my 115 watt soldering iron to start the solder points before finishing up with both my 115 watt iron and my 90 watt gun, so there is more heat density that allows the iron to be on the pack for less time, lowering the chance for damage, and resulting in a better flow of solder. Here I'm attaching the balance leads to the balanced plugs for charging later. To make large pads to solder the main leads to, I welded 7 strips of nickel followed by 6 strips of nickel over the cracks between the original 7. This would theoretically allow a minimum safe discharge of 98 amps. I then folded and tinned the front side to solder the main leads on and repeated for the other side, again covering with fish paper. Since there will be no internal BMS, I will be treating these as two separate success packs while charging. Therefore, I added two XT60 connectors to either side along with two 6S balance leads. I will be charging this pack with ISDT Q8 smart chargers.
To add protection and aesthetics, I added braided nylon tubing to both the balance leads and the main leads. I also plan to wrap this batter in heat shrink tubing, not the blue PVC tube, but for now, here is the final product.